This is day two of building a product visualization portfolio. Today, we're going to make this thing right here. If you want to learn more about the techniques that you're going to see me use in this video, I explained everything that I know about Blender inside my Blender course. You can check that out with the link below and let's get to work. Delete the default cube, shift A, add a circle, which is going to have 16 vertices. Fill with F, inset with I, extrude up a little bit and scale down. Take the outer vertices and extrude them up and lift them up on the Z axis. Fill, inset, extrude, inset, extrude down just below this surface right here. Extrude, right click, scale up a little bit and bring it close to the edges. Extrude down to the bottom. Control B to bevel this. Select these two faces over here, inset both with I, then press X, delete faces. Take the hole on the inside and go up here to face, grid fill. Do the same thing down here at the bottom. This just makes our geometry a little bit cleaner so that when we add a subdivision surface modifier, we're not going to get any shitty artifacts. Now we got only quads, so it's going to work pretty well. Select everything, press Control N to correct to normals. Select one of the edge loops around the top and press Shift G. Select similar face angles. This is going to select all the sharp edge loops. Now press Control B to add a bevel. You want two segments and a shape value of one. Select everything and press M, merge by distance. In object mode, you're going to press Control 2 to add two levels of subdivision surface. Then go over here to object shade smooth. If you want to make these edges here a little bit softer, we can take these edges and slide them with double G. We're going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. Now duplicate this with Shift D and then press H to hide it. That's just going to be a backup in case we fuck something up. Apply two levels of subdivision surface. Select a vertex here on the inside and press Control plus to expand the selection. We're going to use this selected geometry to create the product on the inside of the jar. Shift D, right click P to separate by selection. Select this new object, take this edge loop, fill with F, inset with I, bevel these edges here. Object shade smooth, normals on this object with Control N. In object mode, select the hair product, select the jar with shift, right click, control P, set parent to object, keep transform. Now, if you move the jar, the hair product is going to move as well. Select this edge loop and place the 3D cursor right here with shift S, shift A to add another circle with 16 vertices, fill with F, extrude up, inset this surface underneath, delete the face, select the sharp edges like this and control B to bevel them, add two levels of subdivision surface, go to object, shade smooth, select the lid, select the jar, parent lid to the jar. Now we gotta make the label, so with alt right click and shift alt right click, you're going to select some faces like this shift D right click P to separate by selection now this is a separate object in the back here you're going to delete a couple of vertical face segments we're doing this because we want to have some sort of a gap back here select all the geometry on the label press alt E extrude faces along normals and slightly extrude this outwards while this outer surface is selected you're going to go over here to select select loop select boundary loop control E mark seam go to object shade smooth by angle make sure that this label is also parented to the jar now the model is ready let's go ahead and add some materials and textures Go to the shading workspace, go over here and switch to the material preview, select the lid and add a new material, you can name this material lid, set the base color to black, reduce the roughness a little bit to make it more shiny, then select the jar, add a new material and you can name this material jar, delete the principal BSDF node and instead with shift A you're going to add a glass BSDF node, plug that into surface and material output, it doesn't look like glass yet but it's going to look like glass when we go to cycles rendered view, then select the label, add a new material here, name this material label, that's all we got to do for now, lift up the lid, Select the object on the inside. This is the hair product. This is the shit that you take and you put in your hair. Add a new material here. You can name this product. You can give this some sort of a beige color. That's usually what this hair product looks like. You can set this color to whatever you want. I wouldn't recommend you do any dumb shit like this, but you can do it if you want to. If you're going to go with other colors, make sure that they're desaturated. In other words, make sure you keep the marker and the color wheel close to the middle. Now we got the basic materials. Let's design the label. Go to Canva, create a new design, custom size. I got 3000 by 1000. First, I'm going to go to Google Images and search for signature. PNG. I'm going to take this one right here, right click, copy image, paste that into the canvas, rotate it like this and scale it down a little bit. Add a text box. You can write whatever you want. Just make sure that it sounds fancy. Place that down here. I'm going to go with this font called Bank Gothic because it looks fancy. That'll be about this large. And I'll duplicate this text box. Write something else. For example, 24 hour molding clay. You can call it molding clay or styling clay. We're going to change the font for this one to something a little bit less fancy. I like this one right here. This one's going going to be a little bit smaller. This looks pretty good. We also need a little bit of text over here on the side. Usually it tells you the history of the company or some other bullshit. I'm just going to take some text from Wikipedia and paste it into Canva. Align it to the left side, collapse this box like this, make it a little bit smaller. We're going to place that right here. If you want to get some more icons, you can go to this website called flaticon.com. Pick one of these, go to copy PNG, paste it into your canvas, scale it down a little bit, stick it in some corner like this. Usually when you got this one, you also have this one side by side. I don't know what it means. Who gives a fuck? We're just going to place it right 
idea. They probably don't recycle this shit anyway when you separate the trash. Yo, it's crazy. There's only like a few types of plastic which can be recycled, but you gotta throw all of it in the same fucking bin. Anyway, we're gonna download this label right here. Now go back to Blender, edit the label, go to face select mode of three, then press L to select this surface, press U, unwrap, open up your UV editor down here. With shift A, you're going to add an image texture node. You're going to open up the image which you just downloaded, plug that into base color. Now take the UV map and you're going to rotate this sideways. Now in this case, we got a UV unwrap this again, rotate this by minus 90 degrees and scale it up. Now the jar is ready. Let's go ahead and make an environment. Shift S place the cursor to the world origin. Now with Shift A, we're going to add a plane. Scale that plane up a little bit like this. Extrude it downwards. Now take the surface from the bottom and extrude and scale it up. X lead to face below. Select this edge, press Shift G, select similar face angles. Control B to bevel these edges. Set the shape value to one, set the number of segments to two and set the miter outer shape to arc. Now select one of the sharp edges again. Shift G, select similar face angles. Control B to bevel this again. Scroll up a couple of times, set the shape value to 0.5. Now this is all one piece and you got some nice bevels over here. And we can use this geometry to create the rest of the environment. So scale this up a little more. Go to front view and place a 3D cursor onto your jar. Then with Shift A, you're going to add a circle which is going to have 128 vertices align the circle with your view scale it up a little bit lift it up to around here somewhere extrude right click and scale it up select and delete the lower half of this circle extrude this down to the floor place it in the background extrude it backwards delete the faces in the back delete the faces over here at the bottom go to side view and wireframe view you're going to select some edges from the back here extrude right click scale to zero on the z axis and lift it up to here take these with alt right click extrude right click scale to zero on the y axis push them out like this do the same thing on the other side all the normals are completely fucked up so we gotta select this surface press ctrl n click on inside right here do the same thing for the floor now go back to front view press ctrl alt zero to align the camera with your view set the camera resolution to 1080 by 1080 or something like that g and double z to move the camera backwards go to camera settings increase the focal length to zoom in like this take this edge from the back here and extrude it and lift it up I use some geometry nodes to add some grass around this product. I don't want to get into geometry nodes in this video. I got an entire section about exactly this technique right here in the course as well. Before you go yelling at me in the comments for selling the course, you don't got to use geometry nodes to achieve this effect. You can just get some simple grass like this and place it around the fucking scene manually. When you have lots of objects with an alpha texture like this, you might get some of this blackout shit going on. To fix that in cycles, you're going to go over to the render properties, find where it says light paths, open up max bounces, and down here you're going to find trends transparent change the number from the default 12 to something like 64 this is going to allow you to have lots of layers of transparent textures that way the grass is going to work a little bit better i'm also going to add a little bit of grass behind the scene into the background here i downloaded some plans from the internet and now i got them over here in my asset library i'm going to place a couple of those around the scene as well give me a couple of flowers too while we're at it if you want to know where i got these plants there's this website called gscatter.com it's an add-on for scattering objects into your scene i don't know if the add-on works but if you log in with a free account, you can find a whole lot of plants to download. For example, you can scroll down here, click on whatever this is, make sure the format is FBX, then download it. Then you can just go up here to file, import FBX, find the file which you downloaded and so on. You might have to load in some of the textures and plug them up. But that's how I got a whole bunch of plants that I could just load into my scene at any time. You can also add some tulips into your scene. Your girl is going to like that. I'm just kidding. I know most of you don't got a girlfriend. I'm going to give the environment a suitable color. Maybe something like this is going to work. Now go over to cycles render, go to rendered view. With shift A, you're going to add an area light, place it above the scene, scale it way up on the x-axis, set the power of this lamp to something like 1000. We're probably going to need more than that. So me 2000 place that somewhere over here to the side like this we're also going to select the camera go to camera settings check depth of field adjust the distance so you're focusing on the front of this label right here and before you know it, we got a scene that looks something like this i'm probably going to change up a few things i need some better grass because this grass is kind of shitty maybe i'm also going to change the lighting maybe i'm going to change the hdri and this scene was inspired by a work by drew underscore desk on instagram he is a member inside my course and he knows what he's doing so go check him out on instagram tomorrow we're going to make another scene so make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the damn video, and I'll see you in the next one.